Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. What a day yesterday, 1-0 down, 20 minutes to go. We turned it round. The belief at White Hart Lane at the moment is unbelievable. The atmosphere is incredible. The fans are completely behind the team. What a time to be alive. What a time to be a Spurs fan. This is your regular Monday edition of Five Things We Learned. And of course, it's five things we learned from the Swansea game. So, my first point in the things that I felt we learned is all about our recovery, how we get back from losing positions. I'm sure you've seen on Twitter or whichever social media you use that we're currently top of the table in terms of how we've recovered from losing positions this season. We've gained 17 points from losing positions. That's huge. We also, as you well know, have the best defensive record, the best goal difference. Uh, it's just unlike any Spurs team I've ever known in my lifetime. Uh, there's just so much you can say about it. It's about fight. It's about spirit. It's about the mentality that the team never panic when they go 1-0 down. Never panic. You felt it yesterday. 1-0 down, half-time. Uh, as the, as the half-time whistle blew, there were cheers. There was applause. Everyone was behind them. I've been at White Hart Lane loads of times where we've been 1-0 down at half-time and there are boos and there are jeers. And it just shows that's not because we're losing a game. It's because we don't relate to the team. We don't feel like the team are really working as hard as they should. I'm talking about previous teams. The difference with this one, they're young, they're hungry, they're driven. And every supporter who's playing, paying sometimes upwards of 70 or 80 pounds for a ticket is like, I don't care if you're losing 1-0 at half time, because I know you're working your nuts off. And I know that you're working to earn every penny of that money that you're being paid. And that is what kind of the working class team ethic of football should be about that relatability between you and the 11 players that you're watching on the pitch or the 17, 18 players who are in that squad that day or the 25 players that you've got in the squad as a whole and your manager and it's everything to us at the moment and that's why Spurs are the team that people are talking about potentially winning the title and it's not just that, people are saying they want us to win the title and I think that's why, it's because they can see that it's more than just the sum of its parts, it's an actual team Thing. So today I wanted to talk about for the first point in the five things we learned, that team ethic, how we're doing from recovering from goals down, fantastic time to be a Spurs fan. Second thing I want to talk about, similar but different. We have scored uh, this season with 14 different individual goal scorers. That again is the most in the division. That means 14 of our squad have scored goals in, Premier League, in the Premier League this season. Unbelievable statistic. Again, top of the table shows again. It's not just about Harry Kane. For instance, everyone was wondering at the beginning of the season, Harry Kane, is he going to be a one-season wonder? Can he pull it back? Spurs will be nothing about him. They haven't got a second striker. They haven't got anyone if Harry Kane gets injured. Well, Thursday night against Fiorentina, Harry Kane, broken nose, couldn't play, couldn't be in the squad. We won 3-0 against the team third in Serie A. We made them look awful. We were fantastic. And people were telling us earlier this season that we'd struggle because we didn't have a second striker. They're wrong. 14 individual goal scorers this season. I said maybe it's in the Premier League. I'm not sure. It might be in, the, in all competitions. But still, just an unbelievable statistic. I don't think that's ever happened in my lifetime. We've always been a team about uh, the kind of magic players, the flair players, the players, your Ginnellers, your Bales, your Berbatovs, your Keens, your Defoes. You know, one-off great players who will do it on any given day, but not a team who put it all together, scoring from all angles, scoring from all positions, and really making it happen when the pressure is on. I read the thing yesterday that I thought was really funny. Someone put on Twitter, um, you know, Spursy, and no longer does it mean snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, but it means inevitably winning from a losing position. And I just love that change of mentality that isn't just on the pitch, it's all around the stadium, all around Spurs fans, all over the world. Yesterday we had a, a guy go do a fan cam for us from Atlanta Spurs in America. They're flying in to come and watch the Spurs. What a fantastic time it is. Okay, my third point in the five things I felt we learned is about Christian Eriksen. So I was watching the game yesterday in the south stand lower. Fantastic, fantastic seat. It was a pleasure to watch. And I noticed earlier on that I, I thought from the... Um, from the uh, team that Poch had picked and the formation, that it would be Deli Alley playing alongside Eric Dyer and Christian Eriksen playing in the hole or as one of the three behind the front men. But actually yesterday, for the first time in a long time, it was Christian Eriksen playing alongside Eric Dyer and Deli Alley further up. And I was watching it. Now, obviously, it's fantastic to have Christian Eriksen on the ball as much as we can get him on the ball, because technically he's our most gifted player. In terms of vision, he sees things that other players don't see. However, I was talking to the guy next to me and I was saying throughout the game, this is good, but 
I do feel like we're missing Christian Eriksen in that advanced role because that's where he can uh, thread his eye of the needle passes, that's where he's at his most dangerous. However, after the game, we had a lot of people talk to us in the, on the fan camp saying they thought Eriksen was man of the match and he was fantastic and he was brilliant. You know, he had all those free kicks, all those shots, he made Fabianski make so many saves and he was on the ball a lot and making things happen. So it's an interesting balance, isn't it? Obviously, it's just we're lucky to have him. Fantastic, unbelievable player and he's getting better as the season is going on, I think. But you tell me in the comments section below, do you think... He was really good in that position uh, as the quarterback getting the ball off the back four yesterday or did we miss him further up the pitch? I mean, he definitely played nine out of ten, whatever, so it's not like a, you know you have to pick a one or the other. But, you know, for instance, would you play him there again uh, against West Ham on Wednesday, all things being well? For me, I have to say, it's just my opinion, but I would bring Ryan Mason back in to play alongside Eric Dyer, and I'd put Eriksen back up in the three because I think... There are other things as well. His relationship with Harry Kane is unbelievable. It's almost telepathic at times. And we missed, we missed that, you know, playing little balls into Kane's feet, getting them back, slipping him in. Uh, and also, I think him and Ali have a great relationship when they're kind of playing alongside each other. However, just again shows what options we've got. Unbelievable options, unbelievable squad depth. What a time to be alive. I'm just going to keep saying it. Such a delight to feel this way on a Monday as well. Woolwich having lost. Fantastic. My fourth point in the five things I think we learned. This isn't something we've learned from yesterday. Just something I wanted to bring up. Hugo, Hugo Lloris, is he our most important player? For goalkeepers, games like to, uh, yesterday's are difficult. Uh, you concede an early goal, a bit of fluke, it hit the, the back of the guy's heels and went to the striker. Hugo couldn't do anything about it. But then, it's all attack, all Spurs attack. Hugo has to concentrate. He'd already made a couple of great saves before that goal, and then he had maybe two or three other saves to make. His concentration levels are unbelievable. The way that he sprints off his line to clear up danger, his commitment and the way he communicates with his back four, incredible. Him and Alderweireld, uh, Jan when he's fit, Eric Dyer, just the absolute bedrock of this team. And I think, you know, even though I've talked this season about Toby Alderweireld being the best signing we've made in a long time, we'll talk about how pivotal and vital Harry Kane and Deli Ali and Christian Eriksen are to this side. I think Hugo Lloris is the most important player we have at the club. That's obviously shown by the fact he's club captain as well. And, you know, you may think this is an obvious thing to say, but he just, you know, he breeds calmness. He breeds that into the other players. He, he just, you know, he's been captain of the French side for years. He knows what it takes to win trophies. He's done it at Lyon. And I think he is instilling that belief from the back into the rest of the team. They know that when it comes to it, Last few minutes, winning a game, you need a big save to be pulled out. He will do it. And some of the saves he made yesterday, particularly the one early actually from Gilfie Sigerson from about six, seven yards out, unbelievable reactions. Top goalkeeper. I won't hear a word against him. Definitely in the top three goalkeepers in the world alongside Neuer, maybe De Gea for me. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. My fifth things in the five things we learned from the game yesterday, I just want to talk about the fullbacks, Danny Rose and Carl Walker. They've got stick in their time, I have to say, for their, uh, for their crossing ability and their ability to get to the byline and beat a man. Uh, yesterday, I thought they were fantastic. Their work rate was terrific. They were both involved in the goals. Obviously, Danny Rose scored the winner with a sumptuous finish on the half volley through a load of men. You've just got to get your shot away there. You've got to keep it down. Hitting it into the ground works really well, makes it incredibly difficult for the goalkeeper. And that's what we needed. We'd had so many shots, but that was the one that, that mattered. Fantastic, fantastic. And while I'm thinking of it, Nasser Chadley's finish was just brilliant as well. Absolutely brilliant. He didn't snatch at it. He just let it hit his foot and roll off. Anyway, then Carl Walker as well was involved in the first goal. He worked so hard all day getting up and down the line, uh, you know, and he got his rewards from the kind of uh, broken down corner, he did exactly the right thing. Sometimes you've just got to hit the ball as hard as you can across the box uh, and something will happen. You'll either get an own goal or like yesterday, Chadley managed to turn it in. And that's where sometimes I think we've been a bit frustrated with, with Walker particularly, I have to say. We don't feel like he gets the ball in early enough. And yesterday he did that and I hope he'll learn from that and continue to do it. Maybe, hopefully, he's learning from Kieran Trippier, who, uh, you know, as, his, as, as his, uh, the fight is on between them for the right-back berth, 
Trippier is a much better deliverer of a football. And if I was Kyle Walker, I would just watch Kieran Trippier every day, practice his delivery into the box and try and say to myself, how do I add that to my game? Because if he adds that to his game, he will become a fantastic fullback, not only for Tottenham, but for England as well, where there is a right back berth up for grabs. I don't think Nathaniel Klein has had a good season for Liverpool in particular. Kyle Walker could be going to the Euros if he just keeps that level up. Anyway, guys, that's been the five things that I feel we learned from the Swansea game yesterday. Obviously, let me know if you disagree or agree in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV and just enjoy this time of being a Spurs fan. Get behind the boys Wednesday night, West Ham away. Come on, you Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby from Spurred on. I'm outside the lane. It's bitterly cold. I just had a guy in a fan cam call it white hot lane though. Great pun.